and welcome back to the channel this is Rob here at Smirking Gun Reviews and yeah I'm back at work doing more reviews because I really wanted to fit a couple more comic books in to this week and one from one that I never got around to um, and so tonight we're gonna be talking about another number one I don't know why we have to do another number one every single time that uh, somebody else takes over as a writer or doesn't take over as a writer in like Doctor Strange's case or like Iron Man's case but we still gotta start with the number one instead of like you know there's like a legacy number here why don't you use the friggin legacy number but we've, we're gonna talk uh, a little bit about Deadpool number one at Kelly Thompson and art by uh, Chris Bacalo if that's how you say his name Bacalo never heard anybody say it before I, I here's the thing I, I've dug his art I think he was on Spider-Man and Deadpool I believe for a while I like kind of off and on and so I always let whenever his books uh, I, I've, I've enjoyed them I think they're they're all right I, I like his stuff um, and Kelly Thompson I really I'm not that familiar with but when I've heard people talk about this book and her name it's hard for me to get a read on that and I haven't done the research on her but there seems to be like kind of a uh to this book a lot of people just being like uh and I get that there's been a lot of Deadpool you know he's been used right used wrong used all over the place in fact they mention it you know she mentions it at the end of this book where he's literally done everything what do you do and in this book he becomes the king of the monsters and all the weirdness that goes along with that so I mean spoilers for this book but we are gonna try to keep it a little simple but here's the thing that you know like Deadpool is there's even taste to that like some people just want Deadpool to be the merc with the mouth some people want him to be the anti-hero some people want him to be a straight-up villain and you know that like way back in the day when they realized this guy was marketable they were never gonna make him a full villain again and I, I kinda was hoping that they would get to that because why not go back to their roots this is just kinda I, it's a silly fun book it, I, I can't I don't take it that seriously did I want them to like would I rather them go back to form like old time like screw it but they they don't want to forget like he's got relationships with people you know spider-man and him are kind of friends he cares about what Captain America thinks of him and all this other stuff so I mean I, I don't know how they do a, a reboot unless you know or restart it unless they did something so drastically kill like somehow figure out how to kill him and then bring him back eventually I almost think that they should I almost wish they would just remove Deadpool um, from the shelves for a little while, but with Ryan Reynolds making him so popular in the movies and Marvel not wanting to, you know, wanting to make sure that he's a recognizable name, and they're definitely, you know, with the movies probably making him a villain is not possible because of how they're going to want to make money off the name, and, you know, they're not going to make Deadpool a hero, a villain in that movie, so I think we're just kind of stuck with this, so you either read it or you don't. I happen to think most of this book was just harmless fun and I enjoyed Deadpool he's just a crazy character and if they put him in these insane situations and I didn't dislike the whole monster of Staten Island storyline where he becomes you know he kills this big monster and he because he killed him he takes over now he's got to decide what to do with all the other monsters and you know Elsa Bloodstone shows up and there's a lot of like you know innuendo here and there with him and her like he has with every female character um, and as you notice, I'm not showing you every page because I'm just kind of like, you know, like Elsa, but I am going to give you some, like, looks at it. I mean, Elsa Bloodstone, I, I, like I said, I dig this artist quite a bit. I really do. And so, what, the, you know, there's some interesting things that could go on here, but they kind of felt like stuff that was happening in Spider-Man and Deadpool already. And this just kind of switches it up for like Spider, uh, Deadpool and Elsa Bloodstone and all the things that go like with that. And there's always going to be that in the background when you're at work. But then we get to something that I just was like, oh, give me a freaking break. That they just, I didn't need. And that's, they bring in Gwenpool for two pages. Where she shows up. And I don't know if this is where Kelly Thompson came from, if she was on Gwenpool or what, but somebody wrote this. She wrote this in here about this land shark that she has, and she's giving it to Deadpool because her books keep getting canceled, and you got to take them from me because your, your books are always safe. There's always a Deadpool book. What does she exactly say? Um, she's crying, by the way. And you got to take him for me, Wade. What? No, what? Why? Why would I do that? Uh, he's 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 a shark. He'll be safe. 
Does anything about this place look effing safe? And then she goes, it's, it's not just that. I, I keep losing my books in order to survive. He needs a reliable book. You always have a book. He'll survive if I leave him in your narrative. I don't know what happens to him if he stays in mine. And then she just leaves. And it's kind of like... She, like, she warned in here needlessly. If you like Gwenpool, fine. I, I just, I don't, I don't like how people have written her, and I honestly, you know, what, but at the end of this book, we have Craven the Hunter, who's gonna be, who's gonna, after being in uh, Spider, Amazing Spider-Man's hunted storyline, uh, he's gonna be hunting the monsters on Staten Island, and it doesn't, I don't even know if this is, like, this is the young, like, Craven, his son, it looks like. And so I guess they're trying to figure out what to do with young Craven the Hunter. And I, I didn't hate this book, but when they threw in Deadpool, I kind of felt like they were trying to rub something in my face. About, like, oh, you don't like Gwenpool, so, yeah. And I didn't appreciate that. I don't buy Gwenpool books because I don't like how it's written. And every time I see or somebody review a Gwenpool book and uh, I see the contents of that book, I go, no thanks. So, I mean, if they get somebody on Gwenpool that's, you know, worthy of, you know, like, it gives me a story that's good, maybe I'd read it. But I don't need you to tell me that in this book that cost me five bucks for a new number one. So, anyway, like I said, it's, it's alright. The book's fine. It's just... I, re I like Deadpool as a character, and so I'll probably keep reading this unless it becomes more insulting. Like, if they throw more stuff like that in there. The other book we're going to talk about is something that came out last week called Punisher Soviet Number 1. And the reason I'm reading this and reviewing this is because it's Garth Ennis who did this. So, for people that were maybe tired of the storyline that was going on in Punisher, I, I didn't dislike it too much because it was my first foray back with, with Frank starting with when he put on the War Machine outfit. And that, to me, that great gimmick alone was enough to keep me reading it until they finished his storyline. And while I didn't like every beat of that, especially when they changed him from looking like John Bernthal to bringing him back and changing the look of him just because there's a new... It was, I believe it was the same writer. And we got a new number one again. And it just it finished off the story, and Frank just kind of... They think he's dead. And then, without mentioning anything that he's done in that run, we start Punisher Soviet number one. But, with Garth Ennis on board, we at least get back to form, like, starting, like, fresh, with Frank taking on Russians and finding out that there's somebody running around. Basically, people think uh, that there's a whole bunch of bodies dropping, and they think it's him, and it's not. Because he's, now he's trying to figure out who's pretending to be him. Um, and who's doing an almost as good a job as he would. <laughs> and so I like the premise. It's not all, jo it's not jokey or anything. It's really violent. Um, it doesn't pull any punches in that. And that's, I like that a lot. So Garth Ennis's writing is fine. And Jason Burroughs' pencils are pretty solid. I like kind of a, kind of a just a, you know, like I said, back to just kind of, basic killing bad guys, you know, street level bad guys, Frank's original thing. And in this, there's, he's got this guy he's talking to, um, that's a cop. And he's basically, he's one of these sympathetic to Frank situations where he's seeing what Frank can do and what the cops can't do. And I mean, even though he's, he's looking at this cop, like, you know, he's taking the information, but he still doesn't think very highly of him. Like, He's talking about your tax dollars at work, everybody. Him just he. So he starts following around these guys, and he talks about how he's led into this trap. These guys are. They want to know who's been killing them. They think it's him. They track him down, not knowing that it's not him that's been dropping the bodies, even though he it would be him if he had the chance. And so. They get in there, and he just completely, you know, does what the Punisher does, and he just completely annihilates these guys. They think they've got him trapped, and he messes them all up. And I mean, mess them up. <laughs> and I just love it. So if you're, if you're tired, if you were tired of the last storyline, and you just want bare-bones Punisher back messing people up in her, and just, you know, crazy ways, and, you know, having him be classic Frank, 
where he, you know he drags this guy out in the middle of the woods to just threaten him. He's like, you know, you know, like uh, he's like, you know, I, I'm not gonna kill you, but I know where your family is. And he he's like, you're not gonna kill my family, right? And he's like, you know, no, but I'm gonna let them listen to you die. Wow. And so that's the kind of Punisher we're looking at right now. I'm digging it. I'm digging it a lot. Um, I'm glad that they've gotten away from every superhero. Like it, it, by the end of Punisher's last run, just about everybody was in that book. Uh, that's like street level. Even like I think friggin', I think it was even a moment that Captain Marvel showed up. But at the end of the book, he tracks the guy down at another place where there's a shooting going on, and the guy's just in there with a whole bunch of bodies saying, "Hey, I thought uh, I'd run into you sooner or later." And so again, like if you're if you're ready for back to basics, uh, Punisher Soviet is a pretty solid book. And guess what? This number one cost me four dollars. So instead of like restarting it at five, six, seven dollars or whatever they charge these days, you have this. And so I highly recommend Punisher Soviet. But again, like both that and the reason I chose these two is because they've both been kind of done to death. And so, while Punisher, to me, is a solid back-to-basics book that is, if you like the Punisher and you want that kind of story, you've got it here. And Garth Ennis is a definitely a good writer. And then Deadpool, because he's been done to death, it's not the worst Deadpool thing, but again, if they throw, you know, the fact that people don't want to read Gwenpool's book in your face, I don't know, that's going to turn a lot of people off. It, it, as soon as I got to that part, I was like, oh, you just, you, you were going fine. You were going along fine, and then you decided to like wait till the middle of the book to jam that in my face. So, so both books, you know, I think you've given you got to make your up your own minds. This is your money to spend. I'll keep reading Deadpool until it insults me. If it insults me again, then I'm done. Punisher Soviet, though, I will keep reading unless for some reason you know that goes off the rails. But I don't see it going off the rails. I see it as just being a, a nice little short run on this because I don't I don't think they want to call it Punisher Soviet for very long so I think until they figure out maybe what they're going to do with Frank next that's what we got here and maybe that's what we need is just a series of short stories taken on by some good writers so anyway like I'd say it's like a thumb like a half thumb for Deadpool like a medium and then definitely a thumbs up for Punisher Soviet so if you like this review, please hit the com uh, like button, comment, share, subscribe, all that stuff. If you haven't become a subscriber and you like my content, please uh, become a subscriber. We passed a thousand people and now uh, we're looking for more, I guess. Uh, we're growing and I'm happy. <laughs> uh, you can find me on Twitter at reviews underscore gun. Otherwise, this is Rob at Smirking Gun Reviews saying have a great day. And we'll see you in my usual set for the next round of comics. So have a good day. Bye.